Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I'm Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Benucci, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail. And our passion is sharing that with you every week. is being recorded. Hey. Good morning. Good morning, Phil. How's it going? I'm well, and how are you, Sheena? I'm good. Yeah, good. yeah. Good. It's been, good. you know, these back-to-back short weeks make for a very intense and compressed schedule, but yes. it's been uh, good busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I know we've got back-to-back weeks, and then next week is, uh, next week is a short week and a little bit shorter if you're going to the show, right? Because it's... Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's all that travel and prep time and all that stuff. So it's it's going to be crazy, a little bit yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're in crunch, crunch time for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's nice to meet you, Kenny. Good welcome. Morning. Good morning, hey, Kenny. Good morning. How are you? You got to give me a minute. I, I I just woke up. You got to give me like three or four seconds just to kind yeah, of get. Kenny's on the west coast. Get so focused. This is, here. this is a this is a very <laughs> early morning start. Yeah, six a.m. Um, is a little on the early side for a podcast. Listen, young man, you you chose these times. I, I, so I, I, we're gonna. I'm here. I'm awake. <laughs> I didn't, you didn't have to call me. You didn't have when, to text me. When when we set up the calendar, because the the you can book us thing is new for us, right? We've we've always kind of like hand. You know, kind of hand. Well, Phil's already. Times. Phil's always managed it, and um, we've always managed it. And so he said, "Yeah, yeah, this time is good." And I was like, "Are you? Are you sure? It's it's so like six a.m." And he was like, "Yeah, no problems." <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we'll have a conversation. We had a wedding after, last so. night. <laughs> We're not a wedding. We had the we had the bride's sort of um reception last. It was an East Indian wedding, right, or a Southeast Asian a wedding. So it was one of those ones, like, you know, it's the whole week, but like, every night there's something going on. So tonight yeah. she's going to a, the henna party or something. Yeah. And Saturday we have the actual ceremony in the afternoon. Like, so, you know, like every day there's probably something going on, yeah. but she got home, not late, late, but a little late. And I ate, right. Cause you know, it was East Indian food. So it's like, I'm not going to not eat like way more than I oh should. Oh my God. You got to eat at those right? things. Like it's well, I had no choice. Like it was like, you're we forced mm-hmm. to eat because you know, mm-hmm. someone was cooking that. I mean, I had to do mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, just... <laughs> oh man. It was good though. Hey, anyway, we're awake. We're awesome. here. We're here. I'm not sure. We're here. We are here. We're, we're so glad you could join us. We, yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm so excited to be able to have you. Um, so for the audience, we have Sheena on from Made with Local. Uh, Sheena Russell, uh, Made with Local, and uh, I'm I'm excited because I, I we we met you on LinkedIn. Um, Jeff Jeff was kind enough to give us a a, um, a slightly embarrassing, um, fantastic testimony. Yeah, way <laughs> unsolicited nice. testimonial. So nice. that was super nice of Jeff. Um, and, uh, and I'm just excited cause I, I literally, your bars are regular in our household. We, uh, we love them. Uh, That's we awesome. had to tuck away my, my son's home and he's got a peanut allergy. So unfortunately I had to eat all the peanut bars. You know, yes. that is just, just yeah, terrible. Bad, right? you know, I just had yeah. to eat them all, but, uh, yeah, so so we're excited to have you on the show. Um, the we're we're kind of an unscripted, unrehearsed thing. So what we'd love to do is uh, um, now that I've done a paltry intro, uh, we'd love to hear about you and and kind of find out what your journey's like, and and then you can tell us more about what's going on now. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the free flowing style. I'm a born and raised maritimer. We love to talk. So that's <laughs> awesome. That's my Perfect way to to connect with people. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, like I said, born and raised Maritimer, grew up in PEI, uh, in farm country, potatoes and cows and not much else going on. Um, and then when I was in my early twenties, I moved to Halifax to get a degree in environmental science from Dalhousie University. And that's where I've settled uh, here in Nova Scotia. Um, actually on the Dartmouth side for any Maritimers listening, cause I know Halifax and Dartmouth are not the same. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. Holy smokes. Um, so yeah, we settled in, in, uh, Nova Scotia and Made with Local was started in, uh, 2012 at a farmer's market table here in Dartmouth and, uh, in Halifax. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's been a 
pretty slow journey in the early days of Made with Local and that we were very much just like a little, you know, side hustle, really a farmer's market side hustle. And, uh, but then after I had my first daughter, Ruthie, in 2014, um, I decided to kind of go for it, right? It was my, like, as I say, sh- kind of a, you know, shit or get off the pot moment, really. <laughs> right. You're either going to go for it or you're going to let it go. And the decision at that time was like, you know what, I want to go for this. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's been uh, steady growth since then. And then we've really ramped things up in the last couple of years going on uh, to be distributed all across the country in multiple different grocery channels, um, including their most recent one was a Costco launch in uh, April of last year. So we've been kicking things wow. up and growth is going to be continuing and accelerating in the country. I didn't know you were in Costco. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. So what, what is it yeah. What is it that you make? What is it? What yeah. exactly? Just so people yeah, know so what you do kind of glossed over that. Um, <laughs> so our good. key product, no, not at all. Uh, like Phil mentioned, is our real food bars. And they are these really beautiful, soft baked, uh, almost like a creamy textured bar made with uh, gluten-free Canadian grown oats, natural nut butters, and sweetened only with local honey from small ethically run apiaries here in uh, Nova Scotia. And we have one in Ontario as well um, that we work with. So obviously, you know, being made with local, our flavors and our offerings are really driven by um, seasonality, seasonal offerings uh, in fruits and, you know, different spices and things. Um, and, and of course, local, you know, what can we source domestically and the things that we can't source to directly domestically that are grown in Canada, we get from ex- uh, suppliers like um, uh La Siembra or Camino, which is the retail brand. For example, we get our fair trade organic uh, chocolate, coconut, and cocoa from them. Work with small Canadian uh, producers of oh, ethically yeah. ingredients. So our supply chain is uh, obsessively transparent, I would say, and that really shows through in the quality of our products um, and, and deliciousness, which is the most important thing when it comes to food, of course. <laughs> wow. So what's, what started the journey? Like what was, what was the yeah, you said 20, 2012 you started, but yeah, you just got up one morning yeah. bored and, or saw it. You know what? I need a good bar. I, nobody's doing one, so I'm going to make my own. Yeah, absolutely. So the journey was I was working uh, in a very cushy government job right out of university, which I was extremely grateful for because, like, you know, 23 year olds don't get those opp- opportunities very often. But man, it was boring. <laughs> I was like, you know, in a cubicle all day doing the same thing. And it was in line with what I went to school for. So I was working as a waste resource educator in Halifax, the city of Halifax. Awesome team, super lovely people, but it was just like really boring a lot of the time. Um, And yeah, having, you know, a a creative mind, especially creative in the kitchen. I grew up in a house where, you know, there was a lot of baking, a lot of cooking, a lot of connection to local food, seasonal foods. Um, My friend and I at the time, we had been gym buddies and and realized you know in the world of that quick you know after gym snack all the options in 2012 were honestly gross like the bars out there were nasty and uh and made with ingredients that you literally look like the back of like a science experiment right Right. so you know clearly the landscape is different now bars are one of the most competitive categories in natural grocery um we're in it but uh in 2012 yeah like the they there weren't great options so it was seeing that opportunity um, from, you know, a lifestyle experience uh, and then saying we could do this better. And also we could do this um, in tandem with another trend that was really starting to surge in Canada uh, at the time, which is the eat local movement, right? So we're selling at the farmer's market. We're buying ingredients from other vendors at the farmer's market, turning them into bars on the, the, you know, during the following week and then bringing them back to the farmer's market and being able to say, this bar has honey from that vendor and this bar has blueberries from this vendor and people loved it, right? Because there was that like deep community connection. Um, and also they tasted amazing and they were better than anything else that they were able to find at the grocery store at that time. So those were the early days. And I think the <laughs> the kind of pun, I guess, that, I, that works perfectly uh, in our experience being at the farmer's market in those two, early two years was that it was the best market research you could ever have as an <clears throat> because you're four feet across the table from your customers always, uh, you know, and you're seeing right. how they 
react when they taste it and you're seeing how they react when you say what the price point is and you're hearing them request new flavors or giving your feedback in real time like you're just soaking it all up for you know the weekends for two years um and i think that was an invaluable part of the dna of made with local going forward is that we really had so much input from the community of customers already that we knew what people wanted <laughs> and from then like where where the growth was well you got the taste right i love them <laughs> <laughs> i haven't had them so now i gotta go now, now i have to go buy these ones too kenny that's, i'll bring you some okay i'll bring you Sounds some good i'll see well, i'll see you, you next week you mentioned, Phil, that you have to hide them for an allergy um, consideration, yeah. which is um, something that we are working on. FYI, I'll plant that seed. Uh, but we also hear that from a lot of parents is that like my kids are obsessed with these bars, but they're my favorite too. And I, they'll eat them all if I don't like hide them. So <laughs> we that's hear a problem that. You care. That's like, a good problem. That's a good we problem. We hear that all the time all the time like i'm gonna buy these but i have to i'm gonna buy three cases but two of them are for me and one's for the kids yeah. <laughs> you know it's it's uh, really it's it's a unique it's a unique thing like so so kenny's got uh two older children my mine are um on the older side now as well but like we've never if you really kind of like rewind and look you know because mine are mine are 20 16 and 14 and uh, so when they're growing up you really like we didn't share bars, right? We didn't share snacks, right? Because they're always into, you know, something kitty and it was either like too much sugar or just a little bit rough on my system, right? And then the things I bought, they were like, these are gross. Like, why, why are we? And so when we got to these ones, it really is, it's a little upsetting, right? Cause you realize like, I've got a stash of things and then you go to the stash and they're all gone because the kids have taken them. <laughs> they're in every bag we've got, like they're in the cars, you know, because, it really is. It's the one thing that we kind of all agree on, right? So it's it's kind of cool that way. That's yeah. kind of cool. There's not many products that do that. No, not like, many do, or do it or do it well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. let me go back to your journey. So two years in, so you've yeah. done the show. You've done far farmers and markets for two years. Yeah, and yeah. I'm assuming that we're not really packaged per se. Like, how are you? Are they like, sort yeah. of like almost yeah. like a cookie or a cake kind of idea? Like you know that that format, and you decided then to hit retail like what'd you do yeah so we had very primitive packaging so we always sold them individually packaged but it was literally like this little cellophane sleeve that of course we got off view line which is where right. uh, you That's know where everybody goes days. and uh and like an avery printed label that yeah. at some point i was printing at my at my <laughs> at my office job i was like oh my god i need a 50 labels for blueberry bars for the weekend and i'm like sneaking my labels in on their printer anyway um, yeah, so you do what you got to do in those early days and it was very primitive packaging and then slowly the package evolved to, um, what we became really well known for is like this really organic feeling, um, craft paper sort of texture and touch on, on the product. Um, so that's those, that's been kind of the evolution of packaging over time, but we went, you know, we're very fortunate to be in a place here in the Maritimes where there is a very supportive local grocery chain called Sobeys uh, right. that walks the walk and talks the talk when it comes to supporting local. And we first piloted our bars into, um, you know, several independents, the Pete's, uh, if any of you know right. you're familiar with yeah. Fox, but some of the yeah. higher end, there's not that many of them here in the Maritimes. There's not the density here that you'll find anywhere else in the country, but all the, you know, little mom and pop health food shops, um, the Pete's, and then eventually into a pilot on 17 uh, Sobeys in uh, the Halifax area. And then pushed out, you know, we proved the concept there. They were ripping. Uh, everybody was really excited. And then we pushed out into um, Nova Scotia and then all of the Maritimes and then eventually got listings nationally in Ontario and, uh, and out west as well. So we've been doing business with Sobeys since 2016. They were our first mass account. Um, wow. And they've, and they've been an amazing partner over the years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then from there, of course, you know, you start talking to Loblaws and you then, you know, push out into some of the smaller chains out yeah. West, which for us, um, you know, are a big leap, even just geographically being based here in, in on the East coast. Um, but yeah, again, it's been like, it's been a fairly organic growth trajectory, right? We've taken everything in bite-sized chunks and some of that, or all of it, I should say is, is, because of something I haven't mentioned yet, which is a very big part of our business, our production model. So 
we do all of our manufacturing in partnership with social enterprise bakeries that help to train and employ adults living with barriers to the mainstream workforce. So uh, all of our bars are not made, um, you know, in some big co-packing plant at, you know, somewhere else. They are made here in our community at organizations that have a very specific mission to build skills and training for adults um, with a barrier of some sort, like a disability or otherwise. Right. So that model has taken, has been very gradually scaled over time, like baby, baby steps, which has forced us to grow in a really mindful and kind of, you know, gradual way over the last, I guess, you know, I said we went into Sobeys in 2016. So we're almost, you know, six years in to our mass grocery expansion here in Canada. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's a bit of a backstory too on, on distribution and, growth. And, and you're now still doing that. You're still manufactured in that format. We are, yeah. That, that are. challenges it, right? Like, it's hard to, I'm assuming, I mean, I don't know what it's like in East. I, I, mean, I'm, I can't think of anything in the West. I'm sure they're here. But I, mm -hmm. I doubt that there's, you know, oh, well, you know, this one's closing down. Well, that would be 40 opening tomorrow morning. I don't, doesn't, I don't think it's like that. Like you've got, mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're in a spot, right? That's. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And yeah. And it's been something, you know, it's. So all along, I've been driven by impact in this business. Like that's really right. my star. How many more local suppliers can we work with? Like how many new flavors can we create showcasing the beautiful foods that we grow here in Canada? And how many new jobs and opportunities can we continue to bring into these social enterprise bakeries that are our production partners? Um, and it's been a dance. Yeah, it's been a dance. It's been dampening at times to our potential growth. Like there have, there were many growth opportunities that we had to turn down at the time because our capacity wasn't quite ready. Right. Um, but we've gotten to be, you know, we're a multi seven figure business right now. And we are at the point where we're going to be um, expanding our production even further um, into an additional, like it, we're going to have additional capacity coming on that is going to allow us to really scale um, in in like above and beyond kind of the foundation that we've already built with these social same companies. format though the same idea within, within um, it's gonna be our, yeah it's under our own roof uh so we will have more control over the output but yes yeah, similar uh we're taking pieces of that model and instituting them under our own roof so yeah well, we're getting you. ready wow that's that's, that's <laughs> wow it's it's yeah. kind of amazing wow. right because the like i'm reading a little bit about this social enterprise expansion but like, is it, is it one bakery that kind of brings people in, but it looks like it's multiple bakeries. Right? We have two, one. Yeah. yeah, we have two, wow. we have two production sites. So we have our one, the original one here in New Montes, <clears throat> Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. and they are Indianapolis Valley, literally like five kilometers down the road from our blueberry farmers, from our honey suppliers, like truly incredibly local to where a lot of our food our ingredients are grown. And produced and then we have another social enterprise bakery in ontario in north york so that wasn't the answer because we had this significant pull from the market that we knew that we just had to figure out a way to capitalize on and we weren't quite ready internally um, to take manufacturing in-house so we uh, partnered with the second social enterprise bakery in north york um, trained them like in February of 2020, and then we all know what was about to happen. Um, <laughs> we trade them like just right before COVID on how to manufacture our foods for us. And it was actually through that partnership that we were able to um, launch with Costco uh, because they had the, uh, you know, more, uh, more stringent food uh, quality. I shouldn't mm -hmm. say food quality, more no, stringent. We know you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They got a lot of rules and regs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. we, have all of our you know bells and whistles in here in Nova Scotia as well but we just didn't have the capacity right. um, or quite the, the same certification level that Costco was requiring yet um, to be able to work at Nova Scotia on that so we did that work out of the Ontario Social Enterprise and it was awesome. So how do you manage that though because you're, you're you're in Nova Scotia and you've got a, a small production facility there mm -hmm. another, not small but you know what I mean a small yep. one in Ontario like you know now you're into COVID I, I don't know what you guys are doing yeah. East Coast. well you guys are worse than we were we weren't flying much in the first couple months. So you yep. guys couldn't have been. So like, how do you manage? You we know? were actually at certain points during COVID, not even, we were told mandated uh, actually by the province okay. to not even leave. Like you were not allowed to leave the province. Right. You could not cross. Yeah, you guys Brunswick. were in the bubble. 
Yeah, you guys we were totally bubbled. bubbled. Yeah, we were we were the maritime bubble that was completely right. locked down. At times it was even provincial bubbles where like I didn't get to go home to see my family in PEI for like eight months or something, and then wow. like a three hour wow. drive away, and I'm used to going home all the time, so it was really hard. Anyway, yeah. so we were in the bubble, um, and up until recently things have been pretty chill here with COVID, but that's changed. <laughs> yeah, that's changed everywhere. Um, yeah, but but yeah, it was really hard. Honestly, it was a lot of phone calls, a lot of Zoom right. calls, a lot of like trading samples back and forth. Okay, that like they would do a production run and send quality samples down to us. And I was like, okay, that was okay. That was good, but not perfect. And like you're couriering things back and forth. And like, it was just, it was a lot. Um, well, I, I can imagine. That's why I'm asking. Like, I, I, because you guys, like West Coast, mm-hmm. we closed literally for about six weeks, right? Yeah. And then we were not back to normal. Like we had the restrictions, but not like you guys, um, in Ontario, and then definitively not like you guys in the Maritimes, because you guys were a whole separate bubble. Like you guys were a different country, the four, yeah. the four provinces, than the rest of us. Because you guys were even locked down from us. No, no, no. Let's clarify it the other way. You in BC were a different country from the rest of us. We've always been a different <laughs> so country. So I'm, than I'm the just rest saying, of us. right? Like, because so during COVID, I, I actually had to go and film because Kenny, like, because they they everything was the same for them, right? They kept shopping. They were still eating out, right? And I said- Well, not, them, for the first, not for the first little bit. We were in the same ah, thing, no, but, but we for definitely us, turned it was like, on way it was like you guys. 12 months, 14 months no, of we like- that. No, no, no. Yeah, because I had to show him, I, I sent footage of going through Costco and then Ontario, we had a moment where um, they were actually fencing off non-essentials um, so that um, yeah, Ontario was that. trying to keep the retailers kind of all on the same, so they weren't being more competitive right from the local stores so like the walmarts the costcos you couldn't sell anything else besides essentials because they had closed down everything else um and so when i shot that kenny was like what the hell is going on over there i said i know this is this is the difference right like we, we can't eat in stores we can't do anything we can't i can't buy a toilet if i wanted to right because it's still went to a restaurant until february right? like, 20 february or march 2021 oh, I we so i i called well him the other day because i actually finally went out to get a haircut right because for a long time it was just <clears> like <throat> shaver you know shave it bald or yeah. shave it close to bald because it it's way simpler than trying to figure out all the haircutting crap and um yeah so like my point was like, I would hear it was challenging, but yeah. not like you guys challenging. And if yeah. you're just yeah. starting up a new production and because you seem to be the person who does want to have her um, fingers on the pulse of sort of what's going on. Absolutely. I mean, you're really restricted to, to virtual, which is great, but not great when you're a, a tasting product. Mm-hmm. It's totally mm-hmm. different. And now you're yeah. shipping back and forth. Yeah. You know, it's not, that's, I don't, I don't see the easiness in it anyway. I mean, that's oh, nothing about it was easy. It was absolutely chaotic and, and really hard and expensive as anything, right? Uh, like yeah. Yeah. tons of money. You're writing off product because it didn't it yeah. like taste texture standards because they were still learning, you know, ingredients would show up, not the right spec, but we wouldn't t- be able to tell until it went into a bar and we're like, you know, why is that almond butter that color or whatever, like doing it, you just not, we, right. the intention was the intention was when we had this all ready to rock was that um, we were going to be spending a ton of time there. Like my husband who also works in the business and I and our two kids were going to go like, you know, get an Airbnb in Toronto for six or eight weeks and like right. her down and like get them really rolling. And then yeah. when we felt like we could, you know, pass it off and we would yeah. do that, but obviously none of that happened. So it was slow. It was clunky. Um, we were very grateful for their patience with us. And it's just been a huge like learning curve on both sides. And, you know, for all that I'm, I'm making it sound like it was really painful. Like we, we needed them and they showed up for us even when, you know, they were obviously dealing with their own operational challenges mm-hmm. because of COVID and staffing and stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, the partnerships that we have are incredible. And that's something that, that is a really, um, really resounding theme underneath you know the made with local brand is that we're built on community connections and really you know in really strong beautiful relationships with all of our partners our suppliers our production uh production teams our buyers you know and of course the customers so that's something that we really prioritize always so during yeah sorry go go ahead ahead. no no No, go 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 go. i was just curious yeah (laughs) go phil go (laughs) I just, for him, man. I, I, uh, I, I think the, the local partnerships, um, I have a, I have a different appreciation <clears> for, <throat> I think when you build new products, sometimes it's, it's, um, you know, the, the, 
instinct is to go out and try and find the best deal, right? Try and uh, make sure that your margins are, are the best they can be. I, I'm curious as to how difficult or hard it is to find local relationships and then how do you figure out how do you figure out uh, what's the process for going through and figuring out you know the best kind of fits for your business yeah great question so a lot of our ingredient suppliers have been in supplying us since 2012 right mm -hmm. like i mentioned they're nova scotian honey suppliers they've grown with us every step of the way and that's been incredible um, our fruit suppliers, so blueberries, apples, cranberries, those have been coming from the same Nova Scotian farmers and producers since the early days. So we really met a lot of our original suppliers at that farmer's market, right? Which is wow. pretty incredible. Yeah. The one ingredient that we have had to continue finding or getting kind of closer to the source on yeah. ingredients, um, production or ingredient sourcing has been, uh, oats because, you know, the bigger we get, we kept outgrowing, you know, intermediate distributors and then we'd outgrow them. And, you know, we're doing a Costco deal with a product that is about like 65, it's, you know, a kilogram product. So every bag has six, 650 grams of oats in it. We're doing that in Costco East launch. So we really had to kind of just keep getting closer and closer to the source on our oat suppliers. And we've got some great big <laughs> Um, and very values aligned suppliers for even those those bigger ingredients that we need to be pulling in from Canadian farmers. So, um, yeah, it's been a lot of trial and error. But of course, you know, it's it's the local thing is is number one. And we define local, and this is fairly broadly in, in consideration of Canada, right? For us, at the scale Fine. that we're at, and the yeah. distribution we have, we're looking for Canadian grown and produced ingredients. Um, so Canadian first, uh, what, absolutely every opportunity possible. They have to obviously be able to meet to meet our needs from a from a demand perspective. Like if we, you know, to be able to hit the volumes that we need, um, and price comes into play too, right? There's tons of ingredients that I would love to be able to use in our real food bars and in our in our granola bar mix or other product, um, but but the price is just not not feasible um, for a consumer product, right? So. Um, those are the three big things. Lead times, obviously, to kind of get into more of the nitty gritty, like having good lead times, fast lead times on orders, because in small business or, you know, small, medium sized business, mm -hmm. like we are, like things happen fast and things spike quickly. Um, at least that's been our experience. You know, right. sometimes huge opportunities kind of land on your feet and you got to, you got to get after it. Um, and, and the relationship again, to come back to service, right? Do we feel connected to this, this supplier or do their values align with ours? Um, how are they to, to work with? Like we have ingredient suppliers that we, most of our ingredient suppliers are very actively, um, represented on our social media. We're telling their story, we're showing their face, um, and, and having them, you know, really take up, take up space, uh, in our, in our social media, uh, platforms. So they have to be the right fit. That's a big part of it. Okay. So how have you been finding the supply chain issues that we're all going through now? Because at least you're, I guess, sort of insulated in that. Um, you're just down the street, literally mm -hmm. on, on a number of them, but on a number of them, you're not. So right. that lead time, like cocoa, I mean, we just don't grow. You know, you're not between the two, two, two tropics, so you can't do much on certain commodities. Yeah. They, they come from where they come from, right? But, Absolutely. you know, maybe you had 30 day or 60 day leads, you know, two years ago, and now you might be up to 120, 150 day leads, mm -hmm. you know, and then you got to work, you know, then you're working a Costco launch into that. And, you know, we were both buyers. Patience is, <laughs> it's, we're, it's there. I think you're stressing But it's around. limited. <laughs> well, I, I worry about things like that because that's, that's a real, that's a, that's a yeah. fun part of business right now because <clears throat> yeah. you really have to build all this in, right? And then yeah. it comes into your freshness and then your timing of, of, you know, the ingredients that you want to use locally. Yeah, it's a, you're, you've hit every nail directly on the head. And it's something for us that we were, I, I'm sure, in much better shape than any of our competitors would have been because our ingredients are grown and produced mm -hmm. largely very domestically. Yeah, very cool. Um, the one of the things that we really struggled with that so for example this was an ingredients hiccup but it wasn't the ingredient that couldn't have been produced the supplier couldn't get their hand on 10 that was for a nut butter supplier they couldn't get 10 pound buckets or 10 gallon pails or whatever they can yeah, yeah i know what you're talking about pails. um they couldn't get pails 
Yeah. So they had all this nut butter and they couldn't send it to us. And like, what do you do? Right? Like you can't, we weren't at the point where we could take like <laughs> yeah. a lot of it. Um, but we're, yeah, we're in desperate need of thousands of kilograms of nut butter. And they were like, we, we have it already. We have no buckets. And it's like, oh my God, is this really happening? So, so our ingredient supplier, some of them would have challenges around packaging seem to be, and even right. freight was something where, um, we would often hear that, you know, a delivery was going to be a few more days late because the freight company was having issues with staffing. Um, and so distribution <clears throat> seemed to be a bit like outward distribution um, of our product right. to stores seemed to be where we had some some hiccups, but we just worked with our um, with our merchants to make sure that everybody, uh, you know, knew what was going on and everybody thankfully was really supportive. And obviously it wasn't only us having those same, same hiccups. So, um, we, we were lucky to, again, kind of root into those really strong relationships that we had built and just go get through it the best we could. But yeah, we were for sure in a, in a much better place, <laughs> I think, than a lot of other brands yeah. out there. Cause that's maddening. Is, largely our neighbors. That's <laughs> maddening. Right? No, we, we made it. You can have it, but we don't know how to get, yeah, how do you get, it, to how to get it to you. Oh, there was a glass shortage at one time. There was plastic shortage. Like packaging was a real, real challenge, right? Yeah. And again, I know that's wow. why I asked because I find it fascinating that you can still, you know, because you're you're it's you're in growth mode right during, you know, all of our first pandemic. Yeah. And none of us Absolutely. have done this before, right? Nobody knew what the hell we were doing. I mean, governments, people, like it's. Yeah. Well, and here's a crazy thing that happened in March of 2020, you know, uh, things went sideways is a delicate way to put it, I would say in the world. And Andrew and I, my husband, who again, he also works in the business. We've got two little kids at home. We've got a baby and a five and a half year old. And, uh, and we get word on March 13th when Nova Scotia really shut things down that, um, our flower car, the, the our social enterprise bakery here in Nova Scotia was shut down because they don't follow they don't fall underneath the you know essential food right. manufacturing yeah. kind of umbrella. They're yeah. a social enterprise and employs people who have <laughs> yeah. you know risk factors in COVID. Well, that, that's you know that's their whole mission. So they shut down saying like, we don't know when we're going to be able to get back up and running. And at this point, the Toronto facility wasn't actually making bars yet. They were only doing that, uh, getting ready to launch that oh uh, mix product. So we were SOL in a big way. And of course, like the shopping mania that happened in those like early weeks, we were getting crazy POs from Loblaws and Sobeys and had literally zero production. So my husband, Andrew, who is... <laughs> a literal Olympic athlete. He went to the, the Olympics in 2008. He was driving down to our bakery in New Minas. We eventually convinced them to let us just like go in and do it ourselves. And he would just bake his brains out. He had never made the bars before, but I like gave him the SOPs and he knew how they're supposed to look and taste. And he just went out there by himself and he would bang out like 5,000 bars in a day by himself. And then he would come home and I would go in like maybe through the night or the next day and package them by myself just so we could get like a layer of master cases out to Sobeys. Like just That's something. <laughs> just to get something out there. It was absolutely insane. And we did that for like a month. And then finally, um, just to like, just to keep pushing some dribble of product out right. to Loblaw Sobeys because we needed to yeah. have, you know, that, like little connection to them at least. And they knew what we were doing. So like, you guys are nuts, but okay. Like, thanks for the product. Right. <laughs> um, but we just like, you couldn't, you can't just sit there. You can't yeah. just sit there and not do anything. Right. Because yeah. your business is on the line and these relationships are on the line right. and you know, we've got you know, this business is like, we, nobody has more skin in the game than us. So we were going to make it happen no matter what. Um, that was about a month. And then finally we were able to start incorporating some of the flower cart team that, that social enterprise we work with um, in Nova Scotia back in and get things ramped up again. But things were a little dodgy for a while. <laughs> well, I made it interesting. That's for sure. Yes. <laughs> So how many, how many, how many of you are in the business? So obviously we've heard you and your husband, how big are you? Yeah. Like how many, what's, what's going on? We are a team of six internally right now. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So still fairly lean, I would say. Um, and that'll change, you know, this coming year, we've, we're actually about to kick off a funding round. Uh, I've got a pitch call right after I leave you guys. Oh, so cool. we're, 
yeah, it's really exciting. Um, I'll get my jitters out with you guys and then I'll just go and crush that call after, after oh, this. You'll kill but, it. You'll kill it. <laughs> we are, we're raising capital. So okay. lot, that's all going towards, um, building internal capacity, sales and marketing nationally, finally getting out of the bubble, um, right. and spending way more time in other key markets and, um, building those internal capacities and then yeah pouring some gas on the, the sales and marketing side as well because the brand is just about ready for another big growth spurt so you got a you got a bunch of things you need to look at so you're looking at obviously some production that you're mm -hmm. i'm assuming machinery or there's going to be a physical plant of some kind that you're yeah. going to have to fund and fuel um yes. you have your own sales team or you're developing that we do have a bit of a mix. So we've got in two internal sales and then we work with um, a broker and then have a distributor relationship um, as well. But yeah, looking to really grow uh, the sales team internally and with some right. external sales. Yeah. Right. Because that's a whole different set of management too. And are you using two di a different distributor in the East and West or is it a national yeah. brokerage, national distribution? We're within, yes, exactly. So we're with a national distributor. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's, I find it, it's, it's, you're not the first one, but one of the few that you guys, there's a few of you we've had on the show that have really, the growth hit at, at the best time yeah. and at the exact worst time it could happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where like there wasn't much more shit that could have been thrown on a plate than during yeah. COVID. Right. Just everything seemed to be, and, and you, people like you seem to have made it. I, that's, I find it really, it, it's, it's pretty inspiring. cool. Yeah, it's, it's very it really is. A, I mean, if you can't have a tougher yeah. time, like we've been doing this for a long time. We've been, I've been in retail for 40, I don't even remember 40, like 40 years, 42, 43 years. That's a long, I, we've never seen anything like this shit show. Like this was mm -hmm. nuts. Mm -hmm. And the fact you guys were able to grow and now, so once Sheena hangs up with us, I don't know if you're still on there, but she's doing a capital raise or a phone call to yeah. Uh, I heard. Yeah. grab some coin from people. <laughs> what, um, yeah. Yeah. The fundraises. Oh. Is, is this your first fundraise or you've we done one before? Little, yeah. We did a little family and friends round in 2020 okay. Um, okay. that helped support, you know, getting through some bumps right. and bumps, of course. And that was amazing. Um, so we've got a really great group of those family and friends size investors. So this is our seed round. Yeah. Wow. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It is so exciting. And one of another, another big, you know, I think of them big pillars in the business. So we've got this production scaling that's happening as we speak um, yeah. to allow us to tackle, you know, international expansion. Um, we've got the rays that we're, I would say, you know, really starting to pick up steam on now, getting in lots of really good first and second calls. And then uh, we're actually doing a brand refresh project right now as well. So when September hits, we're going to have- Lord in the door we're going to be launching a new brand we're going to have unlimited production capacity and it's ready to just like let her fucking and then rip. you're going to go take a nap That's awesome Florida language. language language is all good somewhere wow. Else. yeah wow. yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah. really exciting so when you're talking international i'm assuming you're heading to through to our neighbors to the south would be that the first be the uh, now, like mm -hmm. being being in Nova Scotia, we are strategically positioned also to yeah. export really easily into um, Europe, which is yeah. something that right. some brands here have done really successfully. And, and um, that is something that we're exploring as well. But um, strategically for us, and this runs kind of in contrast to what you'll see other CPG brands do, but we think there's a lot of merit to it, is that we probably will be entering into the US market through the New England area versus kind of just Pacific Northwest because you know, there will be some connection to, uh, to the geography, to the, yeah. you know, the relationship between the Maritimes and New I mean, England. That's a great idea. We have tons of bars out here and we've had the same connections that you guys have, right? We, we yeah. have, so you're battling yeah, Seattle, that. Seattle, California, battling it, Portland. You're kind of battling yeah. that. We've, it's, that's established on the West Coast much longer yeah. than it's ever been on the East. So there's no reason yeah. that you couldn't do like the New Englands, you know, the Virginias, yeah. New Hampshire's, like you could play in that area and probably do. Like they'll get it because it's all the same supply some, chain to some degree, I mean, right? I mean, and there's some the board, really but... wonderful, wow. wonderful retailers down there. Oh my god! Right? Like, yeah. like everyone thinks of, of the guys out west, but but the ones in New England, like that area, there's just some really wonderful. Oh, you can do some real good business out there. That's that's a nice yeah. good for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like I mean, uh, one of my favorites out on the east coast is, is Stu Leonard's, right? Like it's just like you just fits so so well in there 
And that's awesome. Uh, that makes me smile. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. we're excited to start traveling again, right? That's another big part of it is like, yeah, we're, yes. we're down in the bubble with little kids too, which doesn't help your mobility. Um, yeah. And deciding like, you know, your risk profile on doing lots of travel. Um, but, but yeah, we're excited. We're real. And that's why CHFA is so exciting for us this year. Cause we're like, finally, like on the road again, the girls back from the Maritimes coming out. <laughs> Look out. It's amazing. Look out Vancouver. It's amazing. So yeah, do you, do you have a booth at CHFA this year? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we are, oh my goodness, third CH Bay Vancouver, okay. and we've done two or three in Toronto as well. So yeah, okay. yeah, we're 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 getting our stride. Uh, That's awesome. Great show. And where are yeah. you in the CH Bay show? Are you with them, within the distributor, or are you on your own? No, we went out on our own. I kind of like that better. I kind of like mm. having your own space. You know, mm -hmm. um, I find sometimes with the distributor alleys, like people will uh, sometimes, well, you guys are buyers, you know, maybe to be like, I'll oh, probably, if I can find that in the catalog later, I don't have to walk down this yeah. because my rep is telling me about it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there might be a bit more of an assumption that, that maybe, um, I always did that. I always looked at everybody outside a distributor first. Yeah. Cause distributor, I just, all you have to do is phone the distributor. I mean, or you'd yeah. find it sooner or later, but I always used to try to find yeah. the ones that hadn't got, um, roped into, into that side yet. So it's probably good. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, I think I think we've done in the past maybe like one of the little kind of like uh, what do they call them like cutting board tables or something like that, yeah. like a mini mini table within the larger booth, um, and but then have your own full ten by ten somewhere else. Right. So we're at booth eleven thirty. If anybody wants to come visit, very cool. We'll put those yeah. in the show notes. Yeah, so if you guys cool. are going to the show, make sure yeah. you stop by and see the team. Yeah. That's going to be amazing. Yeah, I guess we'll yeah. have to meet you in, a, in less yeah. than two weeks, right? Less oh, than yeah. two weeks. Okay. Yeah. I'll be yeah. there on Saturday. I will be there on Saturday only, actually, okay. because we're doing a bit of a staggered trip. My husband and I to make sure the kids aren't on the yeah. for too long. So I'm yeah. in and out on Saturday night, and then Andrew will be there wow. for the rest of the week. You're but, going oh, a that's long great way too. for... Uh... Well, and it's easy from Halifax. There's direct flights all the time to Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Listen, I'm, can... I'm in Toronto. It's a, it's a, it's a five-hour <laughs> haul there and a four-and-a-half haul back, and it's fine. I do it just fine. But Halifax yeah. is like a this, another that extra leg. step. Like it's, it's like the Maritimes is a whole different step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's makes it's for a long day. dedication. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's long. Right? And you got okay, little kids yeah. too, and yeah, yeah. That's a lot to juggle. That's you know, that's a lot for wow. parents to do. Like you got, a, you guys got a lot of shit on your plate with with kids Maybe. on top of it, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because yeah. I'm sure that they're very patient and says, you know, they look at each other. Okay, mom and dad are busy right now, so we'll, we'll play by ourselves. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what my daughter, my my seven year old, has learned to do? She knows now if she like asks me for anything while I'm on the phone, I'll be like, yes, Jesus, get out of here. Like, oh. I, so you know, like if I'm because I'm like there was a long time where we were all you know cooped up together, and I'd be on an important call of some sort, and she would know at exact that moment like I, mommy's compromised. She'll I give me whatever, whatever I want. want. In this like <laughs> It's like they they've know. got a little stress meter, right? So, so it's, when it hits the red bars is when you ask, right? Because you're yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. got the guy to figure it out. Oh my god! Anyway, no, they're amazing. We're so lucky. They're great kids and a lot of fun and full of energy. And yes, it's a lot, but I mean, I don't know. You only That's live once. We do what we it's do, all part right? of it, right? Yeah. It's all part of it. Yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh, I think we we yeah we feed off the energy. My husband is an extremely uh, high energy person and i'm you know don't do well with sitting still either so we're pushing yeah it. clearly we clearly. can see <laughs> we can see clearly yeah. um Good for you thank you for coming on the show and and thank you for doing this before your seed round. yeah it uh hopefully we helped you get hopefully we help you motivate you a little bit or get jitters you excited out or <laughs> do you, i think it's awesome yeah. You yeah, that's to... what I was saying to uh, Kenny. I get my jitters out with you guys. Yeah, and like, yeah no, you'll, you'll, awesome. you'll kill it. <laughs> no, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, the story, I mean, the story look... is, is easy to. Yeah. You should be able to get money easy because you're you're very obviously you're very, very personable. Your story is great. You guys got your shit together. I mean, you're doing all the right things. I mean, yeah. Yeah. what the hell? You just want to just like stay on the line, and then I'll yeah, just, no like, problem. Move on this yeah, call, no and you guys can just run it. Here's here's what <laughs> sure. we should do is. I, I've recorded this whole thing, right? It's going to be an episode. So what you should just do is put up a little thing. So when you get on your call, the sign will say, listen to this. Yeah. And then just send in the money. All right. Otherwise. <laughs> yeah, don't make this long. Just cut know, the check. Let's get going. I'm now crowdfunding this. I'm putting. 
yeah. <laughs> so, and if you guys don't get in early, then you don't get the Kickstarter benefit of being a recognized, you know, C. Exactly. <laughs> That's good. A C contributor. So yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Good for Yay. you. Yay. Um, congrats and, and good luck on your, your yeah, seed round. Um, whenever, you know, it's appropriate to let us know, we, we'd love to like play that back for our audience too, is, is to tell them that, that you landed, you landed lots of oodles and oodles like of, of dollars. I can get, yeah, I can get yeah, more, I would be, would be more goodness. Very happy to share that news when it drops. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Yes, let please. us know. Yeah. 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 So, Thank you so much. Good and then luck. We'll, we'll see you at the show. Good luck. <laughs> Sounds we'll great. See, we'll see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> see you soon. Yeah. yeah. All good. right. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. See you later, Shana. Bye. Stay on, Phil. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Very so cool. So cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, cool. wow. That shit a lot of energy. Yeah. 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 That's a lot of shit going on. Look, I, I you know, I more and more. Guys, yeah. More and more. I, I feel like these guys, I, I don't know how they do it, but they all, there's just so much energy um these guys are all at, look what i got um so i had to walk That's away because uh because the dog was trying to defend me against canada post um because i got our um our uh chiwis chiwis yeah yeah uh but yeah no she's she's awesome she she really yeah, is i mean uh, i think the stories are always i just find it amazing that these people all i mean seriously covid covid couldn't have thrown more wrenches into the into into business then i mean i honestly i don't it's because it's still lingering right because now supply chain is the biggest problem but it's pretty amazing that these people all you know go through it figure out ways to do shit in in some ways it clearly makes us better though like like that's that's oh, an absolutely. unavoidable observation now as you kind of look at it and you look at all these people and how well they've done um and nice. uh and uh you know like you you kind of go yeah, they all seem to figure out how to make it right. Like it's kind of amazing. No, it's 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 yeah, it's just super cool. I mean, I don't know how else to say it either. Like it's just super cool. Dude, okay. these are these are amazing. Yeah, those look these really chewies. good. Yeah, yeah, those look really good. Um, now I got to figure out which ones which orange. Well, should I try the orange first? Peanut, probably, right? Kiwi. I'm gonna try the original oh. kiwi. I think that's the one I want to try first. Go but right to the I, orange after that, because I'm dying to see how an orange, orange would do. And then what else is there? What's this one? Tropical? Wow. Okay. Uh, I think... Okay. Let me just... All good. All good. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. So so I think it's, uh, I, you know, just inspire. And I really love that she's... Because I told the... Like, now we're getting into brands that the kids love, right? And then the kids are like wait, they were on your show. And I was like, yeah, they were on the show. Right. And you're eating like, it's really cool. Right. It is They're, actually pretty cool. You know, right. Cause you yeah, start getting yeah. these connections with, uh, yeah. Uh, with these people. I, I, I don't, it's going to be cool to say to pay because we've had so many of these people on now. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Listen, I gotta get a coffee. Be... I'm struggling here. Oh, they look good. Yeah. Actually, they look like fruit. They actually do look like, um, tasty. Yeah. It's actually really good. They sound crunchy. They sound like a chip. Mm. Seriously, you sound like you're eating chili. It sounds like chips. Mm -hmm. That's Phil's munching on the show. Mm -hmm. That's Very Phil good. eating chiwis that you would have heard last week. Okay, I'll, yeah, just do the orange test, and then, then I'm going. Yeah, yeah I'll show I you the orange, and then you I gotta can get go. some caffeine going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry. No good. It's your thing there. Oh, I like it. It's an acquired taste for sure. Because it's kind of weird not to eat a kiwi fresh. But... Well, it's funny because, I mean, and it's not something, it's not the fruit that I go to. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, Christ almighty, that looks like an orange. Like, really, though, eh? With a rind on it and everything. Wow. See, and I was still trying to figure out if you're going to get the bitterness from, what do you call the white shit there? The rind. No, the rind is the outside. I don't know. Like, you, mm. when you shave, you know, they say don't go through the whatever the next part is buddy this is right there this yeah is... i don't know how she's gonna sell them because i don't know who would but once you taste them fuck they're good really yeah. they're really good well they look good they look they look like an orange like, i mean obviously that's what they are but wow okay cool okay i mean i love you man but i'm going yeah yeah bye
wrap this up and we will uh thanks for listening thank you for listening and uh you and i will chat later later we're on a you can shut the recording